All right, so here are some of the key, absolute key exponent operations, rules that you need to memorize. So what happens if you have something like x squared times x cubed? What do you do with those exponents? If you have x squared times x cubed, in fact, let me just go ahead and write this here. What happens if I have x squared times x cubed? Well, if you multiply with the same base, then you add the exponents. Multiplication changes to addition. This would be x to the fifth. Look at the next problem. What do you do when you divide them? Divide them, so if I had x cubed divided by x squared, well, a lot of you think of this as three x's on top, two x's on bottom, so two of the x's would simplify and there'd be one x left on top. What's an easier way of getting that? Simply division turns to subtraction, so that'd be x to the one, which is quite simply just x in the simplified form. So if you're dividing two exponents with the same, or sorry, two variables with the same base, you subtract the exponents. What's the next one? What if we had something like x, y quantity cubed? If it's multiplication and only if it's multiplication or division, can you do this? You can distribute the power. It has to be multiplication or division. This does not work for addition or subtraction. So the problem is we can take that power and we can distribute it to both of the terms only because it's multiplication. So this would be x cubed, y cubed. Same thing, doesn't matter if it was a fraction. What if I had x over y quantity cubed? Because it's division, only multiplication and division, again, I can distribute that power both to the numerator and to the denominator, so I'd be left with x cubed over y cubed. What's the next one? The next one would be like, what if I have x squared quantity cubed? So what happens when I raise an exponent to a power? So uh, uh, this is an exponent to a power, then we multiply the exponents, x to the two times three, so this would be x to the sixth. What's the next one looking at? The next one's really just saying, um, what do we have with a negative number here? Um, you have to be really, really careful with your parentheses. When you have a negative number, you have to know, is that number in the parentheses or not? If we look at this first example here, it is very clear to me that this negative is not inside parentheses. So if you need to think about it and you're evaluating it, how you would evaluate it first is you would do the exponent first. Remember, this is the PEMDAS. You would do exponents first, so you do the exponent first, and then you would do the negative. Okay, what you need to realize is that negative does not go inside the parentheses unless it's directly placed inside the parentheses. So parentheses absolutely matter. One of the most important lessons this semester, parentheses absolutely matter. Same thing, what if you have a constant multiplied times x to the n? The idea here is do the exponent first and then multiply times that constant. You don't raise you don't do the constant first and then raise it to the exponent. You have to do the exponent first. Um, and those are the rules for you there. So let's go ahead and simplify some of these expressions. The first of those expressions being 3x squared times x to the fourth. Again, here we have multiplication. Anytime we have multiplication and the bases are the same, again, it, they do both have to be x's. If it was an x and a y, you could not do this. They do have to be the same variables. Since the variables are the same, we can add the exponents. Sorry, that would be a two plus a four. So that would be three x to the six. Add the exponents when you multiply. Three x to the six being our final answer. So this next one, I have 2x cubed times the square root of x. Again, this really, really helps when we're trying to work with radicals to think about them instead of exponential, or sorry, radical form, think about them in exponential form instead. So this square root of x is the exact same thing as x to the 1 half. This helps us see that we can apply an exponential property. Multiplication, we add the exponents. So this would be 2x to the 3 plus 1 half. I know several of you are not comfortable with adding fractions and whole numbers. I strongly encourage you this semester, if you have any fear in your ability to add fractions and whole numbers or fractions and fractions, use a calculator every single time. So directly put that into your calculator. Three plus one half is as a simplified fraction. Improper fractions is what we use here. That'd be x to the five halves. This would be perfectly fine with me, but again, this is exponential form. 
And sometimes if it starts in radical form, you actually want to put it back into radical form. So the two stays out in front. It is not raised to the five halves, only the x is. And then remember, whatever the numerator is, is my exponent, and whatever the denominator is, is my radical. So since this is a two in the denominator, I know that's a square root, and then I'd simply have x to the fifth. So if it starts in radical form, you generally want to end it in radical form. That would be my final answer here, two times the square root of x to the fifth. And you could have done the square root of x quantity raised to the fifth as well. Let's go on and look at this next one right here. We've got a couple of things going on here. We have division. I'm thinking division is going to mean I'm going to be subtracting exponents, but I also have an exponent raised to the exponent. So I need to do order of operations first. The first thing that I need to do is handle what happens when I raise an exponent to an exponent. Well, again here, I multiply the numbers. So this would be 4x squared all over x to the 1 third times 2, which is the same thing as 4x squared over x to the two-thirds, okay? Now that I've done the exponents, I need to think about division. Division turns into subtraction. So here I'd have four, because they're both x's, the variables are the same. This would be two minus two-thirds. Again, I strongly, strongly encourage you to use your calculator here. This would be four x to the four-thirds as a simplified improper fraction. And then this one actually started in exponential form, if you look at it. So instead of changing this to a radical, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in exponential form. Final answer here being 4x to the 4 thirds. Let's go look at, uh, looks like the second number C here. I apologize for labeling those wrongs. This would be the fourth one, which would be D. This is X to the 5 thirds over X to the 1 6. What do I want you to get at? Look, this is division, division, same variables, subtract the powers, 5 thirds minus 1 6. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. Use your calculator. Don't try to get common denominators. Don't try to do this by your hand. There's just no need. It's a waste of time, and you're most likely going to make errors on test day. So please just do 5 thirds minus 1 6 in your calculator. Get comfortable using your calculator on that TI30XS multi view that I suggested, the N over D button. It's, um, the, it looks like an N over a D. That's your fraction button. That's how you input a fraction. Makes it really, really easy. Um, so please input those fractions into your calculator. You'll end up with x to the 3 halves. x to the 3 halves. Started in exponential form. We ended in an exponential form. This is our fifth one. This should be e, but it really says d. This is 2x to the negative 3. What I'm strongly emphasizing here is the parentheses. I want you to look at the next two examples. They're both 2x to the negative 3. One of them has parentheses and one of them doesn't. So the question then becomes, how are they treated differently? Well, the idea is only what is brought to the negative exponent is brought to the bottom. Okay, Only what is raised to the negative exponent is brought to the bottom. So both the 2 and the x are raised to the negative 3. So this would be the 1 over 2x quantity cubed. Um, when you move it to the denominator, you make that power positive. The parentheses are absolutely vital here. The answer is not 1 over 2x cubed. What we have to do here now is because we have multiple things brought to a power with multiplication, we can distribute that power. So this would be 1 over 2 cubed times x cubed, which would be 1 over 8x cubed. That is the final answer. Do not make that initial statement, 1 over 2x quantity cubed, your final answer. The final simplified answer is 1 over 8x cubed. Let's go to the next one. The exact same problem, 2x to the negative 3 or 2x. Um, so 2x to the negative 3, the only difference in this problem is where are the parentheses. So the idea is we need to truly treat this, think about this as parentheses being around the x and only around the x um, because the 2 is not in parentheses. So what does that mean? The 2 stays on top. The x cubed goes to the bottom. That would be our final answer. No work to show on that problem.